in Matthew chapter 17. Man, there's so much stuff in here I could, I, I would like to talk about. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go down right now. I want to go down to verse 23. Verse 23 of Matthew 17. In verse 22, Jesus says that the Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men. And they will kill him, in verse 23, and he will be raised on the third day. And they, his disciples, they were greatly distressed. Greatly distressed. This word for distressed is lupeo. Lupeo. Lupeo means to experience deep emotional pain. So I'm, I'm, I'm reading over this last night and I'm looking at the Greek, you know, of course, I like to look up the meaning of words in Hebrew or Greek from the Bible and Matthew 17, 23 uses this Greek word lupeo. And I'm like, okay, I'm looking at lupeo, lupeo. And it's almost like the Lord's saying, um, I want you to look at lupeo and I want you to, um, Sorry, I have my sunglasses on. I was walking out. Sorry, the sun was in my eyes. Didn't realize it until just now. So the Lord's kind of talking to me as I'm meditating on his word. What is it about this word lupeo? And it's spelled L-U-P-E-O. L-U-P-E-O. So if I take the 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 letters U-P, L-U-P-E-O, if I take U-P out of there, you've got the word Leo or even the name Leo, right? I know many Leos. Leo means lion, right? Leo, like if you're the sign Leo, that represents the lion. So you've got Leo in there, L-E-O. Remember, it's spelled L-U-P-E-O. So if I take up out of there, it's Leo. And then the word up means what? To ascend, to go up, ascend. It's not below, you're not beneath, you're up. You're the head, not the tail, you understand? So if lupeo means to experience deep emotional pain, I mean, come on, Jesus just said the Son of Man is going to get killed, but he'll be raised on the third day. And this distressed them. It, it caused them it, it, to experience deep emotional pain. That's what lupeo means. So how do you get out of deep emotional pain? How do you get out of deep emotional pain? Well, when you take the word lupeo, take up out of there, you have leo, L-E-O is what's left over, which means lion, and then you've got up, lion up, lion up. It's like that saying that they say, you know, if a guy, if a guy's acting like a baby, they say man up. It's time to man up, bro. It's time to man up. Well, it's time to lion up, right? It's time to lion up. Jesus, he's called man, of course, son of man. He's called God, of course, son of God. He's called the lamb, our perfect, unspotted, unblemished sacrifice, the lamb of God. But he's also called the lion, the lion of of the tribe of Judah. Judah means praise. So he's the lion that roars with praise, right? And if you only knew how much there is victory in praise, because when you, you are praising, you are lioning up. You understand? You're lioning up. You're giving praise. You are doing the very thing that David did. When he defeated that giant called Goliath, David first gave praise to the Lord, said, my strength comes from the Lord. Goliath's strength came from himself. He was a giant. He was a skilled warrior. But, but Jesus' strength, I mean, but, but David's strength came from the Lord. And he praised the Lord about it. So there's victory in praise. Praise is a part of giving thanks, being grateful, 
being joyful, right? And, and giving thanks is not so easy when you're in a world of negativity or if negative things are influencing you or if you if you're experienced lupeo, great distress and emotional pain. How do you give praise through emotional pain and great distress? That's where lioning up comes in. Lioning up. A lion can be greatly wounded, but that doesn't stop the lion from giving its roar. Even if it's in great distress, it still battles, it still fights, and it still gives a roar. If you want to get out of great distress and emotional pain, it's time to lion up. And one of the greatest ways you can lion up is giving praise. Giving praise. It's amazing that Jesus calls us light in the darkness. When you see that word in the darkness, I was actually, I was meditating on light in the darkness this morning when I was working out at the gym. Light in the darkness. Thinking about, oh, I should talk about light in the darkness because that's what we are called to be. Now, when you see the word in, light in the darkness, it's actually, in is, comes from the Greek word en, E-N, en, which means in, right? And I'm thinking, okay, light in the darkness? How can, how can light be in the darkness if God has no darkness in him and God is light? How can light be in darkness? And as I was meditating on this, while I'm working out at the gym, the Lord says that word in means among as well, among. And I'm like, really? So when I went to go do my, I did a leg workout today, and then after I did my leg workout, I, I was doing the stair climber machine. So I'm climbing on the stairs, and I get on my phone and I open up the Bible app called Bible Hub. And I go to the interlinear and I look up the meaning of light in the darkness. And I look up that Greek word N, which is for in, and guess what? And not only says in, but it says among. And that's where the Lord wants me to concentrate on the meaning of that word. Because let's face it, one Greek word can have a lot of different meanings, just like Hebrew. There's a Hebrew word called barak, B-A-R-A-K, barak. Depending on the context you put it in, barak can actually mean either good or bad. Did you know that? Or a blessing or a curse, actually. Barak means blessing, but it also means a curse, right? Plenty of times it says to bar that, that God gives you the barak, the barak, the blessing. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul, barak. But Job's wife says to Job as he's suffering to barak God and just die. Just barak him and then die. And when she says Barak, it's actually the context of this curse. It's kind of like if you were to compare the word bad today. If, you're, if you tell somebody you're, you're a bad boy, right? You're a bad boy. You're a bad person. Well, you're saying that they're bad or evil or they did something evil. But if you, if you look at a car that passes you by, oh, look at that task, Tesla that just went by. That thing is bad. You're meaning it's awesome, right? It's the context. What are you meaning? Just like the Greek word 
phobos, which we get the word phobia from. Phobia. Now, when you think of the English word phobia, you're thinking of terrifying and all that, you know, claustrophobia, terrified of being in an in enclosed places. But it says to phobos or phobia God and give him glory. What? Phobos God, give fear God and give him glory? Phobos? How dare the Bible say that when it also says perfect love casts out phobos? Fear. So what's the deal, God? I mean, you want me to fear you and give you glory, but then your word says that your perfect love casts out fear. Which one is it? Should I have fear? Or should fear be removed from me if I'm in your perfect love? What's going on? Ah. So you have to understand the usage of each word in context. Otherwise, it can become a big mess for you. Right? We have English words like that. For instance, the word light, L-I-G-H-T. Now I can say that I'm light on my feet, right? Meaning that um, I, I, I'm not weighed down. I have a skip in my step. Or you could say, you know, this, uh, if you have a piece of paper in your hand, this piece of paper is very light. It, hard, it doesn't weigh hardly anything. It even floats before it hits the ground because it's light. But then you can also say light as far as the light, the sunlight, the light in the flashlight, the light of God. Do you understand that? So it's different context for light. So we're going back to that Greek word en, which not only just means in, but it also means among. So listen, you are the light among the darkness. If you are in anything, you are in his light and his light is in you. Just like the saying Christ in you and you in Christ. It's an even exchange. You guys look like the number 11. You're one spirit with the Lord. 11 looks like two numbers, but there are actually two that become one, joined together, and they perfectly reflect each other. Identical twins. It's like one looking in the mirror at itself and seeing another number one, and they're the same substance. You are the same sub substance with Christ in spirit. So you are in the light. The light is in you but as far as the darkness goes you're walking among the darkness you're not in darkness because you were transferred into the kingdom of his son which is light you have been removed from the kingdom of darkness in darkness you are trying to walk in the light if I only do well behaved stuff and stay away from bad and do all the good because I, I, I concentrate on the knowledge of good and evil the knowledge of good and evil the knowledge of good and evil instead of no, no, you, listen get away from that tree and just go partake of the tree of life it's been opened up to you partake and once you partake okay that life is in you and we can't get rid of it just like when Adam and Eve partook of the knowledge of good and evil that thing was in them and they couldn't get rid of it no matter how they behaved it still was in them you understand that so you partake of the tree of life that tree of life is in you so if you want to eat from the tree just hang out at the tree of life right you are in the light and that light is in you and you walk amongst the darkness I remember that there was this guy I was talking to at a gym years ago that I was working out at and I was sitting in um, a sauna and this guy came walking into the sauna and we stuck up a conversation and he was telling me how terrible the things are in the world today and, and all this stuff about politics and blah, 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 blah. And this was like around 2012 or 13, probably 2013, I think. And anyway, as we were talking, 
I introduced myself, asked him his name, he told me his name, and his name was Bob, and I told Bob, so what you're telling me is this world is a really dark place, right? He says, yes, it is. And I said, so Bob, if you go into a really dark room and somebody lights a candle, I said, that candle light stands out pretty good, right? And he thinks about it and he's like, hmm, yeah. And I said, and the darker the room, the more that candlelight stands out, correct? And he says, yeah. And I said, then you go be that candlelight in this really dark world. And he just looked at me and said, it was a pleasure to meet you, Bob. And I shook his hand and I left. <laughs> and the amazing thing is what I said to Bob really got to him. He let me know when I saw him again another day at that gym. It was a life, ex life, it was a life changing experience for him. Those are his words, not mine. It's amazing. It's amazing when you just say something so, which seems to be small, but it can have so much of an effect on somebody and change their lives, you guys. I didn't say, dude, can you shut up about this world being a dark place? Listen, I'm trying to have peace right now and you're disturbing my peace. But I also didn't get into his negativity either and start talking about the darkness and the darkness and the darkness. No, it's pretty obvious that darkness still exists. But I'm not trying to not be darkness. What I'm trying to do is wake up to who I truly am, who the Lord sees me as. Because all these years, I've been thinking that the Lord's been seeing me as darkness and telling me, you better become light, you better become light, you better become light. Well, how do I do that? Well, try harder, do better, stay away from evil. If you keep on partaking of evil, you become evil, you're darkness. Okay? And, and as, as much as that seems to make a lot of sense, the problem with that is, so when do you suddenly become the light? How much evil did I have to stay away from and how much good did I have to do to actually become the light? Because when you start thinking that way, there's just, it just is never enough. It's just like this guy at the gym this morning that works there behind the front desk. I asked him, I said, hey dude, where'd you get the red gym shirt? Had the name of the gym on there and red t-shirt. And he says, oh, we have a bunch in the back. You want one? I'm like, yeah, man, cool. So he says, they're all, they're only extra large. Are you okay with an extra large? I said, sure. I said, as extra larges, they fit me fine on my upper body, but they're always big around my waist. It makes me look like I got a big waist. <laughs> and, uh, and he kind of had a laugh about that. So we started, he got me a t-shirt and we, start talking about bodybuilding, you know, the extremes that a lot of people go to bodybuilding, the stuff that they put in their bodies, the extremes that they'll go just to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Cause he say, he was telling me, he's like, man, he says, I want to get big like you. And I said, what are you talking about? I said, you look like you're probably even bigger than me. He's like, no, 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 I'm not. I only weigh 180 pounds. I'm like, how much do you want to weigh? He says, well, I want to, I want to be like 200. And then chisel down to 180. I'm like, oh, I get it. And I said, but is that ever going to be enough for you? And he's like, probably not. I said, well, that's the whole thing with bodybuilding. I said, it's never enough, right? I said, no matter what size you get to, you always want to improve. And I said, it actually, actually it, it can be beneficial to think that way because it might keep you driven. No, I'm not satisfied. I want to keep on going, pushing ahead, pushing ahead. But I said, but there's another thing that can happen to your, your mind is where you look in the mirror and I said, and you're like reverse anorexia. You look in the mirror and all you can see is that scrawny guy, that scrawny guy. You're never big enough, never big enough. And I said, so a couple of different things can happen for it to you. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, I totally get that. So there is a point of being content, you guys, but there's a point of being driven as well and wanting to keep on moving ahead and keep on, keep on improving and growing and stretching.
But like Bob, trying to find a solution for this dark place by just calling out the darkness, calling out the darkness and saying how rotten the darkness is, I told Bob, just be the light. Be that candlelight. That little candlelight. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, right? Just be that little candlelight, dude. And it changed his life. He started acting differently at the gym and he started speaking differently at the gym. It was really amazing how that happened. You know, you can, you can be the light but nobody can, you can have where nobody, including yourself, sees that light in you. Why? Because you're putting lampshades over that light. Lampshades, you know what a lampshade does? It, um, sorry, I, I, I have like a hangnail or something on my finger. A lampshade kind of blocks the light. It, it makes it lessen, lessen, L-E-S-S-E-N, lessen the light so it's not so bright, right? And if you just keep putting lampshade after lampshade after lampshade over that light bulb, well, eventually you don't even see it. It just becomes what it seems to, it seems to have been become darkness. But did the light actually become darkness? No. The light just got covered by shades. And that's what happens when we don't know our identity, who we truly are in Christ, that we are the light. When we don't believe that and we just get taught by religion how you need to try harder to become the light or you better maintain that light in you, know the light is always in you. When you have Christ in you, that light is always in you. It's just letting that light out, letting it shine, and you can't let it shine if you don't know who you are. Otherwise, you're just giving off um, false light, right? By your works and your efforts. Now, works and efforts are great. But it has to come from a foundation of who you truly are, not who you're trying to become. It's like working from righteousness instead of working toward righteousness. It's working from heaven instead of trying to get to heaven. You know, it's working out who you are, working out that salvation that you already have. Now you're just bringing it forth. Everything that it involves. Do you understand that? So you are, you are, you are coming from a foundation of being a son of God, full of light and working that light out. But these doubts and these fears and these roadblocks and these things that we, we believe in our minds that we accept in our minds, they cause that light to not shine. And most of us think, oh, our light doesn't shine when we're doing bad stuff and not doing good. So it seems, so it seems, but that light will truly shine when you're truly coming from a place of praise, when you're truly coming from that place of praise, when you're actually, you say, you know what? I'm not going to try to become a lion. I am a lion because that lion is in me, right? And that lion is called King. You've got the king in you, and he gives you that identity as a king. So you serve as a king, but you also serve as a priest in this world. And creation is crying out for us to manifest and show up to know who we are. It's time to lion up, you guys. Lion up. Know who you are in Christ. Discover what Christ has given you, and learn how to use what you've been given. Right? Let go of all that false identity stuff and flow in your true identity, in that light, because you are the light of God. Just be it. Remove those lampshades. Let them go and let that light flow. And you'll walk into 2022 saying, hello, 2022, this son of God is coming for you. All right, you guys, I love you. Hope this message has blessed you. I'll see you all in the next video, and I hope you all have a great day.